Please welcome to News Mongolian MNB World. I am Jugder Humboldt. And uh, for our top stories. Ministry of Health issues update on current situation. Mongolian community in Washington, D.C. rings in the Lunar New Year with festive celebrations. Ankle Bone Shooting Contest marks the Lunar New Year celebrations for seniors in Bayonghongor province. For other news, stay with us. The Ministry of Health has issued an update regarding the current situation. Advice has been provided on ensuring the schedule and readiness of medical facilities for the Lunar New Year, along with prevention measures for respiratory tract and foodborne infections. Additionally, guidance has been offered on the proper use of traditional foods and alcohol. During the Lunar New Year, a traditional Mongolian holiday, gatherings increased, heightening the risk of infectious diseases. Respiratory diseases, particularly influenza, are prevalent across Mongolia as of the first month of 2024. Notably, the Hangul province remains at the intersectional or green level, while 12 provinces and Ulaanbaatar are at the activation level, with 8 provinces at the orange level, indicating an average disease level. As Lona New Year festivities commence, it is crucial to exercise caution during traditional greeting ceremonies. It's imperative to refrain from kissing children and avoid touching their cheeks and faces to safeguard them against illness, especially given their vulnerability to influenza. Ongoing virus surveillance reveals the prevalence of the H3N2 virus of the influenza A is trained at 46% followed by respiratory syncytial virus at 25%. COVID-19 accounts for 19% of cases, while the influenza A virus stands at 12%, with other viruses at 1.3%. Although people of all ages can become ill with influenza, certain age groups are at higher risk. This includes infants and children up to two years of age, pregnant women, individuals with chronic diseases, individuals with HIV and tuberculosis, individuals with cardiovascular disease and diabetes, and individuals aged 65 and over. As families welcome guests and prepare large amounts of food during the Lona New Year, the risk of food poisoning due to improper storage and handling escalates. It's crucial to meticulously inspect the production date, shelf life and storage conditions when purchasing food products. Careful scrutiny of packaging integrity for canned, bottled, and semi-processed items is necessary. Moreover, products requiring refrigeration, such as eggs, mayonnaise, ice cream, and cakes, should be sourced from establishments with proper refrigeration facilities. Adhering to simple yet effective food safety practices is paramount. Individuals experiencing symptoms such as diarrhea or vomiting more than three times in 24 hours may be suffering from food poisoning. Therefore, if you experience these symptoms during the Lunar New Year, you should visit your district hospital or family health center if you encounter such symptoms. Emergency care is available round the clock at the National Center for Communicable Diseases. The vibrant Mongolian community in Washington, D.C. came together to celebrate the Lunar New Year in a joyous and culturally rich event that highlighted the traditions and the customs of this significant festival. The event held at a local community center saw Mongolian families, friends and community members gathering to usher in the Year of the Dragon with a plenty of enthusiasm and spirit. Decorations adorned with traditional Mongolian symbols set the festive atmosphere, creating a warm and welcoming environment for everyone in attendance. The celebration kicked off with a traditional Mongolian dance performance, showcasing the grace and elegance of the country's rich cultural heritage. 
Attendees were treated to a mesmerizing display of traditional dance forms and a traditional wrestling competition, with an added touch of authenticity to the Lunar New Year festivities. We had the opportunity to display Mongolian traditions and hospitality to young kids who grew up here and foreign guests through this festival. Visitors were able to learn from Mongolian customs and traditions. Some people experienced a Mongolian wrestling contest for the first time. Guests were able to experience our customs and our music and taste our cuisine. I think the event also carries an important role in promoting Mongolian tourism. A highlight of the event was the communal feast featuring a delectable spread of Mongolian delicacies. Traditional dishes such as steamed dumplings known as booze and dairy snacks were served, allowing attendees to savour the flavours of Mongolian cuisine and fostering a sense of community through shared meals. Children participated in various activities including arts and craft sessions where they created traditional Lunar New Year decorations. The younger generation had the opportunity to learn about their cultural roots and carry forward the customs associated with this festival. On the occasion of the Lunar New Year celebration, the governing authority of Bayanhongor province in Mongolia organized a unique and traditional ankle bone shooting contest, bringing joy and festivity to the senior citizens in the community. Approximately some 70 seniors enthusiastically participated in the event, showcasing their skills and camaraderie. The ankle bone shooting contest a cherished tradition in Mongolian culture took place with much fanfare and excitement. The competition featured five categories, each designed to test the precision and expertise of the participating seniors. The spirited atmosphere resonated with laughter, cheers and the unmistakable sound of ankle bones colliding against the designated target. Participants adorned in traditional attire demonstrated their prowess in the ancient art of ankle bone shooting, a skill that has been passed down through generations. The contest not only celebrated the cultural significance of the Lunar New Year, but also highlighted the importance of preserving traditional Mongolian games and activities. Nowadays, many kids spend their times behind the screens and desktops. So I think such mind and tabletop games like ankle bone shooting should be promoted among the population. This event carries an important role of passing our traditions and customs to our younger generation. Mongolians have nice tradition of ankle bone games, so I came to play ankle bone games with our seniors. On the occasion of the Lunar New Year, we have organized this ankle bow shooting contest. In general, every year we dedicate some amount of our budget for organizing the events directed to senior citizens of our region. The five categories of the contest added an element of diversity and healthy competition, allowing seniors to showcase their talents in various aspects of ankle bone shooting. As the seniors engaged in friendly rivalry, the event fostered a sense of community and unity among the participants, contributing to the overall festive spirit of the Lunar New Year celebrations. Government officials and local leaders were present to witness the contest expressing their support for the seniors and emphasising the cultural richness embedded in such traditional activities. The event served as a testament to the province's commitment to preserving and promoting its unique heritage. Please uh, take a look at current affairs of Mongolia. In a remarkable achievement for Mongolian biathlon, 21-year-old Ingpat Ingsahan clinched his inaugural medal marking a significant milestone for both the athlete and the nation's biathlon community. Ingsahan's stellar performance has been evident throughout the year with notable achievements in recent competitions. Just a week ago, he showcased his prowess by finishing 6th and 11th at the IBU Junior Cup, signaling a consistent and impressive form. 
This victory comes on the heels of Ing Sehun's previous participation in the World Cup two years ago, where he demonstrated promising potential despite not securing top-tier results at the time. The intense competition saw Ing Sehun narrowly edging out his rivals, finishing a mere 1.6 seconds ahead of Finn Kala Lukenhunta. Both athletes displayed exceptional accuracy hitting all 20 targets. The pivotal moment in Ing Sehun's triumph came as other competitors made two or more mistakes paving the way for the Mongolian athlete to claim the individual victory. Ing Pating Sehan's success not only marks a personal achievement but also adds a significant chapter to Mongolian biathlon history. Now please have foreign news partnered with international news agencies. With the number of migrants making the dangerous Atlantic crossing from West Africa to Europe up sharply, two senior EU leaders arrived Thursday in the African coastal nation of Mauritania. European Union Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez landed in Nouakchott, the capital of Mauritania, for talks with President Mohamed Old Gazouani. During their visit, the European Union leaders are expected to sign deals with the President on migration, security and green energy. In January alone, some 7,270 migrants landed on Spain's Canary Islands, the archipelago that is used as a stepping stone to continental Europe, about as many as in the first six months of 2023. The Canary Islands had already been struggling with a record number of arrivals last year when nearly 40,000 people arrived on its shores on boats from West Africa. Despite the presence of both the Spanish and Mauritanian patrols off the coast, the majority of this year's migrant arrivals have departed from the impoverished nation. Mauritania has been hailed as a key partner of the European Union and Spain in the fight against people smuggling and is seen as one of the most stable countries in the volatile Sahel region. Many of the migrants embarking on smugglers' boats leaving from Mauritania come from neighboring Mali and Senegal. In addition to announcing more funds for migration control and humanitarian aid, European officials are expected to sign several financing and development projects on green hydrogen as part of an European Union energy transition initiative. Russia's main election authority on Thursday refused to allow a politician opposing Moscow's military action in Ukraine on the ballot for the upcoming presidential election. Boris Nadezhdin, a local legislator in a town near Moscow, was required by law to gather at least 100,000 signatures in support of his candidacy. The Central Election Commission declared more than 9,000 signatures submitted by Nadezhdan's campaign invalid, which was enough to disqualify him. Russia's election rules say potential candidates can have no more than 5% of their submitted signatures thrown out. Nadezhdin has openly called for a halt to the conflict in the Ukraine and for starting to dialogue with the West. Speaking at the Election Commission on Thursday, Nadezhdin asked election authorities to postpone the decision and to give him more time to rebut their arguments, but they declined. The politician said he would challenge his disqualification in court. The presidential election is scheduled for March 15th to 17th. President Vladimir Putin is almost certain to win the re-election given his tight control of Russia's political system. All right, that's all for today. Thank you for staying tuned. We'll see you next time with more news and updates. Have a great day ahead.